not, not just in uh, women basketball players, but in all female athletes, the loss of uh, menstrual cycle is part of a syndrome that we know is what we refer to as a female athlete triad. Can you tell us more about that triad and how it can increase the risk of injury in female athletes? Yeah, the female athlete triad um, is a combination of loss of menstrual periods, um, which results in um, osteoporosis or osteopenia. And the loss of menstrual periods is related to um, either uh, limitation of food intake uh, or um, uh, restriction of certain types of foods where the body is at an energy deficit. So if you have an athlete, let's say, who is a cross-country runner or um, you see it sometimes in swimmers, uh, dancers, um, where they limit their caloric intake for um, more psychological reasons. So some athletes will think that, for example, if you're a cross-country or marathon runner, that being thinner is necessarily better. And these athletes will begin to restrict their intake and ultimately begin to have changes in their uh, metabolism where the body goes into uh, kind of a preservation stage. Um, And often these athletes do not have uh, adequate uh, calcium in their diets, and they don't absorb that calcium because they become estrogen deficient, because they're food deficient or uh, somewhat malnourished as a result. And so these athletes are at much higher risk for uh, stress fractures in particular, And that's where the female athlete triad was coined when you would see the athlete who came in with a combination of loss of menses, uh, osteoporosis or osteopenia, a stress fracture, and those were linked together. Um, It's much less common to see um, uh, the female athlete triad in um, the kinds of sports that we were discussing, for example, basketball, because speed and power are very important, and size is beneficial in those speed and power sports. Uh, It is more common in uh, distance events, uh, in events where uh, athletes are judged based on uh, size. Um, And you can actually see that, a a version of that in males in the wrestling population where there really is a component of restrictive eating. Um, What's interesting is you can also begin to see these issues with stress fractures and um, uh, recurrent stress fractures in athletes who are also vitamin D deficient, who may not have the triad, but may simply have uh, uh, abnormalities in terms of the way that they absorb uh, vitamin D and calcium, uh, or their intake of vitamin D and calcium, even if their diet is otherwise normal. Um, So the trigger, I think, that makes us begin to think about it is when an athlete has more than one stress fracture, or when they develop a stress fracture that just doesn't make sense with their level of training. Uh, so you have an athlete who's not training at high intensity. They maybe they are they were a runner and they run three to four times a week, um, not at intense mileage, and suddenly that athlete develops a stress fracture. The first thing you think about is their bone health. The second thing you think about is the cause for that abnormality in their bone health, and that's when you start to talk about things like diet. You review their menstrual history. Um, and uh, in these days now, you would also measure a vitamin D level to see whether they're vitamin D deficient, and that's one of the things that's predisposing them to the bone injury. 